What's going on guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to Late's Hoops. Today's video, we're just going to be having a quick discussion over four people involved in the NBA. Two of these guys are coaches, two of these guys are players. All four of them are NBA scapegoats, but I only think two of them should be, while the other two maybe not so much. We're going to get into all that in the next few minutes, but before we do, I want you guys to go in the comments right now and tell me out of these four people we're discussing today, who is to blame for these team struggles? Without further ado, let's get started with the first person we're going to be talking about, Ben Simmons. Ben is actually labeled as one of the non-scapegoats for me in this video. I know that seems like a shocker with his play on the court, but just hear me out. In the media's eyes, obviously him and the rest of his people, like I said, will be talking about our scapegoats, but Ben, he just gets a different type of backlash like no other from the media. And Kyrie kind of said my thoughts exactly last night in the press conference after that loss to the Bucks. He has the skills to be a great professional. Um, he's done it in the past, and he hasn't played in two years. So you guys keep coming in here asking me, like, what about Ben? What about Ben? And it's just he hasn't played in two years. Can you say it louder for the people in the back, Kyrie? It's been one to two years since Ben has played NBA-level basketball. And for you guys out there who actually hoop, you know you can rehab all you want and do the drills all you want. But until you lace them up and go run fives, there's nothing like the speed of actually feeling the contact and the physicality. And I can only imagine what it's like actually playing in the league. But also, he did battle with a lot of mental health issues during those time, along with the physical issues he was rehabbing on his body after surgery. Ben has to find his footing with this team and it's not a four game project. It's not a 10 game. It's not a 20. It might not even be a 42 game project. The issue with the media is that they just don't care about the potential of a team or how long it's going to take a team to get good. They just want it right now in a split second. They need a headline. They need to criticize someone. I see so many people begging Ben Simmons to shoot and yes, I would love for Ben Simmons to take some layups even if they're contested, even if they're physical even if he has to earn the bucket even if he has to put his back to the basket but the thing is is ben simmons does not need to average 20 points a game he doesn't need to average 18 he doesn't need to average 15 in my eyes i would be so content if that in 50 to 60 games or 82 games or in the playoffs even I see Ben Simmons playing real physical defense I see Ben Simmons running out in defense I see Ben Simmons making full court passes that he made back when he was in Philadelphia and playing with that confidence. Ben just needs to work every single day, pushing himself to be the best, working into their confidence. And it doesn't help when people criticize him. Even if he makes good plays, we don't look at the good plays. We just criticize him for the bad things that he does. If you want to criticize someone, you should talk about the second person we'll be talking about today, which is Doc Rivers. Now, this is a scapegoat, but rightfully so. If you've been a fan of NBA basketball from 2008, 2014, even 2017, you'd know that Doc Rivers should not have a job as an NBA coach right now. He has a ring. Yes, he won that in 2008, but a ring with four superstar players on the court. The Celtics were supposed to win three to five rings. That was the projection, and that was the buzz and the hype back then, not one. The Clippers, they should have won some hardware under him, both in Lob City and that year with Kawhi and Paul George, but they didn't. If you've been watching the dumpster fire that is Philly that's to start this season or any of my recap videos, you'd know that Doc is just not great at making decisions as the game goes on. Coaches like Ty Lue, Nick Nurse, even Mike Budenhoser, they're just starting to understand how to make adjustments as the game goes on. Obviously, Ty Lue and Nick Nurse, they've been doing this, but Mike especially, after he won that Coach of the Year award, he's been taking it into a whole nother category and speaking of scapegoat coaches who have a horrible rotations and adjustments how about we talk about the third person steve nash steve nash was one hell of an nba player but my god he has some of the worst rotations i've ever seen with a roster this diverse and this talented he should have zero no excuse not understanding this by now Last year, I bit my tongue, and even the year before that when they had hardened because they had a lot of injuries, I bit my tongue, but now I just can't. 
Steve Nash has got to go ASAP. His rotations, like I said, they are terrible, and he has no sense of a hot hand. Those kind of honestly tie hand in hand together. If you guys watched last night's game, you saw Edmund Sumner or Ed Sumner, whatever you guys like to call him. If you don't know him, he was drafted in the second round last year. I think he was the 57th pick. I that could be wrong, but I'm pretty. I might put a picture up to prove myself right. I'm not sure yet. But he came off the bench last night and scored nine points in six minutes. He also got a steal and a assist he was just creating a spark plug type game and then nash just subs him out and then he doesn't get subbed back in for the rest of the game and we don't even see much i saw in his presser last night nash was talking about how it's going to be a facet of the team those were his words literally that putting ben simmons at the five was going to be a facet of this team going forward and somehow i just feel like that's not true like somehow i feel like he's saying that and he's just going to continue to not utilize ben in the way that they should, which is putting a bunch of shooters around him and putting Ben at the five. I mean, we see a lot of these guys like PJ Tucker playing the five out there or even Draymond Green out there playing the five. You know, they were up by 12 going into half this game and they lost it after Nash got ejected. I mean, Nash, he shouldn't have even got ejected. I like that he's showing emotion for his guys. But he just is not cut for this job, in my opinion. There's a lot of assistant coaches out there that could probably take a swing at becoming an intern while we're looking for a big, big splash in the new head coach department here in Brooklyn. But the fourth and final player we're going to be talking about is Russell Westbrook. I saved the most tricky one for last because I do let me just get this out of the way. Russell Westbrook has not and is not playing good basketball. He hasn't been for the last 18 months or so, but he has been the Lakers scapegoat for the last 18 months or so. So I don't think it's very fitting because it's not Russell Westbrook's fault that the Lakers front office designed a horrible horribly built team if you guys watched my first video ever it was pretty much me just trashing the lakers talking about how this team is not going to see success just because of the fact that it's just it's not a good team for basketball today's basketball especially but it's not russell westbrook's fault like i said that he's here he just shows up like a professional the hoop every day and he answers the media's stupid questions and like i'm not saying that he's productively doing either of these things or anything for that matter because he has not been but it's hard for me to want to defend russ in this moment like i said because he still can be good but he's so resistant to change and he's so apparently resistant to healing any injuries that he has he just wants to play through them that i don't even know what the next three years of his career will look like three years ago he was averaging a triple double for the third year in a row and now in three years he could very well be out of an nba job if this is the case if he keeps this line of awful productivity going but let me know what you guys think in the comments of these four players which of these people are scapegoats and which of these are not i know this was kind of a short video but thank you guys so much for tuning in if you liked today's video please leave it a like and if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe i'm gonna be pushing out nba content all season i'm trying to create a very positive hoops environment where people can just share their opinion and we can all be great together. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Peace.